you being you, I know you've gone off and done something <laughs> with the gonk choid. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. The, um, you've been the busy. Behind... Yeah. Well, it's, um, you know, like I said, I've, you've, uh, we have this framework now, so we've got to put it to use. Um, the idea behind the, the gonk vocalizer was we've done R2, who is just the highest end of the droid thought and complexity spectrum, uh, emotional complexity, grammatical complexity. Uh, R2 is a, a very, uh, very, very thoughtful, very vocal, uh, very deliberate droid. And so I thought it would be fun to try tackling a droid on the complete opposite end of that spectrum, a droid that doesn't really have any um, any emotional capacity as far as we know, um, a droid who definitely doesn't have a library of hundreds of words and thousands of syllables to draw from that R2 does, that instead really just has uh, kind of one, two, three, four, maybe five-ish words, and really only one of those is especially well-known. And so, of course, that's the gonk. And... So what source material do we have for this droid? We have the gonk sound, and uh, there was a library of a couple different gonks that I got access to. And the other sound is uh, this vocalization that's kind of um, a chatter that I think a lot of people don't necessarily think of when they think of the gonk, but when you're working with a droid that potentially otherwise only has one word that it can vocalize, you're gonna need, you need all the source material you can find. So um, in the interview that we shot before, as you alluded to, uh, we talked about my journey to isolate uh, this particular um, uh, chatting gonk vocalization. Yes, yeah. And so here is what the original, this, this didn't exist. Uh, so those couple gonk sound files um, in that archive, this chat vocalization did not exist. So the only way to find this um, that I know of, um, and that as far as uh, anyone else I've spoken to knows of, is to pull it directly from the soundtrack of the film. And here's what that sounds like. Yeah. So we're looking for that that second. Uh, I can. What do you? <sighs> It's probably time to say what we think it is, but maybe it's not time. Maybe it should never be spoken. So it's the second after the gonk, gonk, it's the next vocalization. Um, you and I have talked about this. I hear something very specific in it. You maybe say. do, maybe don't. Let's not say. Let's let people have the fun with that. Let, let people well, run with that. We'll see what people think. Yes. But here is what it sounded like after passing it through um, all kinds of uh, spectral manipulation and noise reduction and so on and so on and so on tools. So there is our nice, pure audio source that we can work with for a vocalizer. So we have the gonk sound and we have that. How much variety can we possibly extract from just those those two ideas, those two sentences. Well, that was the challenge of the gong vocalizer, and here is the end result. So we have our um, decidedly gonk-like interface, and we have three controls for this. The first control we have is this slider, and then we have these two buttons. So Obviously, we need this gonk to be able to go gonk. That's where the slider and this button come into play. Here is uh, the highest pitch, highest register gonk. And if you know the gonk droid, and if you've ever messed with a gonk build or tried to make your own gonk vocalizer, what you've heard every time you press your gonk button is the same one gonk every single time, because that's all there is. Absolutely, yeah. Through through the magic of human cyborg relations, um, through a ton of uh, wizardry that's uh, just way too way too much to get into here, but um, the magic of processing, uh, real time processing, kind of prep work, separation of each of this gonk vocalization into um, a head and a body and a tail, all of which can get processed and manipulated differently and layered and cross synthesized. Here's what we end up with. So the differences are subtle because 
if they weren't subtle, they wouldn't sound like the gonk. But basically, there is an unlimited range of vocalizations. Every single one of these is determined by thousands of different parameters that are going to be unique every single time. So you will get a gonk every time, but you will never get the exact same gonk every time. So as we adjust the slider, we can reach different um, different pitches of the gonk, and this isn't um, this isn't just a pitch shift that I'm doing. Um, those who are familiar with the couple gonk sounds that have uh, been around um, will recognize a kind of deep sort of it's people call it like a death gonk, and I think it appeared in a Star Wars video game. I don't know that it's ever appeared in film or television. But uh, a lore master will have to chime in and correct me if I'm wrong. But here is what it sounds like. So it's a very deep gonk. Uh, when I first heard it, um, I assumed that this was a fan had just gotten over eager and decided to do some kind of pitch correction or you know some kind of funky yeah. uh, processing. But that is not the case. Um, after listening to these couple source sounds, um, what I think is this sound was probably the same gonk recording take from the studio, but um, passed through a series of different analog filters to create this effect. Um, possibly with some manipulation of the tape playback, um, a bunch of different things. So what we can do is not only can we get unlimited variety of this very deep gonk, <laughs> but we can get anything in between. Sounds so better. with these two controls, you can vocalize any unique gonk within the range of these canonical, um, is it canonical if it's a, a sound that was recorded um, in the studio at the same time, but never using the films? To me, that's still canon. That's kind of the threshold that I aim for for these vocalizers. What do you think about this, Lee? Yeah, good, good question. How do you describe uh, to me, it's that anything that is part of these sessions and has appeared in any Star Wars media is fair game for vocalizer. But yes. how? What would you call that? And would you would you agree with that sentiment? Well, they call it canon, don't they? It's canon. If it, is it canon if it never appeared in Star Wars media but was part of the recording sessions? Oh, that's a good question. Good question. I think. So you say part of the recording sessions, yeah. You're, you're because because of your media background, you're taking this to a whole new level, which again nobody's really thought about. I would imagine. I don't know. I, I would say yes, it is. So you know, Ben Burt, presumably. I don't know for sure that he did the gong, but I'm sure he did because Probably. he did yes. everything that's great in Star Wars, and the gong yes. is great. Um, recorded this uh, this vocal take processed it and then processed it a few more times and somewhere in the lucasfilm archive exists tapes of these variations on the gonk and um that deep one uh like i said a appeared in a, a video game that may or may not be star wars canon at this point but this is one of those those questions it came up less often with r2 because there wasn't as much uh deep diving for source material necessary. Yeah. Um, the yeah. original pool was uh, relatively extensive. But so you have this question for the gonk, like what is canon? What is what can the vocalizer do? And my my goal in all of this always, my mantra is to just be transparent, to use only uh, original source recordings and to just stay out of the way of the material. And if there's, for example, with the gonk, a high gonk and a low gonk, um, I think we have some creative liberty to um, synthesize gonks in between that range. To me, that tells me there's an upper limit and a lower limit. And it's it um, that's uh, that's kind of where I land on that. And it's yeah. it's one of the interesting like, parts of... Because otherwise, as well, you're so limited, especially with the gonk, you're so, like, like you've already established, you're, you're so limited with your options that I think you've, yeah, you've, you've got liberty to use wherever you can find the audio you know wherever you can lift it from i think really you know whether it be a game or whatever for sure yeah 
Cool. Well, I'm glad you agree. Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, it's a, it's a question. That if comes anybody up a disagrees, lot please comment. You know, please let us know your thoughts. Definitely, you know, and, and share what you how you feel about that. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. And this this is amazing because Michael Badley is currently doing a um, Fusion 360 CAD tutorial, um, which I believe you can always catch up on as well because they're you know they've been uploaded to YouTube on making your own gonk droid. So people are cadding up their own gonk droids and no doubt will end up printing them out, whether it be a full scale version or a miniature version. So there should be quite a few more gonks out there sooner or later. And they can put a Bluetooth speaker in there and have some fun with the audio as well now. And so there's there's one last piece to this, which is the uh, the second button that many people are probably wondering about now. And so that is where the uh, the chat line comes in. And so you'll remember the original sounds like this. So it's the da 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 da, which I will not uh, I will not yeah. voice with the words that I think it is. Yeah, you can but, definitely so he, hear now. You've cleaned it up. You can definitely hear its words now, rather than um, just audio beats. Definitely. Yeah. So that is where this button comes into play, and every time you press this, you will get a different voicing of that line. So you'll never have two of the same. This is one of my favorite things to do is to take something simple and turn it into something infinitely complex. And uh, it's a technique that came into play a lot with R2 and I think it's really showcased in the gong vocalizer. Um, the software's ability to take a little bit of source material and turn it into something organic, something that is, um, Every single time you press one of these buttons, you're going to have a unique sound that no one has ever heard before. That's great. Yeah. That's that's so cool. While you've been talking, I've just my mind's been going over in overdrive. I feel a competition coming on now. It's not going to happen just yet, but I think somebody needs to translate and establish what this gonk is saying, what we think it's saying. So um, I'm going to hatch a plan, and I'm going to have a competition and see who can get what we think the translation is just so everybody else can be driven mad by just continuously trying to play it back and and that's <laughs> what it's saying so um yeah let, let me work on that but I, I feel a competition coming on there for sure <laughs> i think that's a great idea but it's also a little bit frightening because um i might have mentioned this before but i'm not sure based on what i hear from that chat line um the first word to me is clearly the same word as the gonks, but the word that I hear once I try to come up with like a, a coherent sentence that I think I'm hearing in that is not gonk, it's something else. And that's a dangerous game because if the first word of that chat line is not gonk, then the other words are not gonk either. And if the gonk doesn't say gonk, then what is this droid and what even world are we living in right now? <laughs> so we should be very careful here. Goodness me. I think, Michael, you need some sleep. I think you need some serious sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just phenomenal. Yes, again, that's three things you've shown me in the last hour that, have, again, you blow me away. It's your, your talent is just immense. It's so cool, Michael. So, Michael, I've got to ask, this is a separate app, um, obviously because it's not going to get in, involved with the Astromech apps. This is a third app you're talking about now. What's the availability on this one? The availability for this one is very soon. So cool. okay, hang, well, hang tight. Yeah, you've already shown how busy you are, you know, with everything you've done in the last, what was it, two or three weeks, I think, since we uh, aired the last video. So, um, you know, Something I can see like that. Busy. So let's, let's not rush you here. What you've done so far and released now, is amazing um and thanks for sharing that and the gonk thing you know the gonk app to follow soon which is just phenomenal and and no doubt more i'm not going to put any pressure on you no timelines or anything but um yeah i look forward to seeing what you've got coming next and are you still Thank open you. to suggestions as well are you still looking for other people's ideas i am definitely still looking for ideas and i'm already in conversation with a few people who i think have given me some direction for the next one so yes the answer is yes, and if it if it's a 
uh, droid that speaks binary and it appears in uh in star wars media um se- sell me on it is really the main thing here because i'm not know. charging for these so the currency is excitement pitch me on say. why this droid is cool yeah, like and interesting it. and needs to be vocalized yeah i like it it's not it's not all about the money it's not money talks here it's just the passion isn't it michael so um you know and and what you've done is just i keep saying it but it's just so cool so um thank you so much and thank you for spending the time joining me again for another chat it's always good fun to catch up with you and see what you've been doing um you know just by just by socially and you know just seeing what you've been creating so thank you so much on behalf of all the builders thank you for what you've done and um Here's to the next time. For sure. Good man. Thank you, Michael.